Dean Andrews is giving a voice to the voiceless and taking the powerful to task. Now, a Target 8 investigation. He didn't want to die. He just didn't want to suffer anymore. Her brother, a Tampa firefighter, suffered in silence. And then the unthinkable happened. Firefighters and other first responders rushed to help the victims of every imaginable tragedy and accident. For many, the horrific images stay with them. And over time, that can, of course, impact their mental health. Some turn to drugs or alcohol to numb the stress and the pain. And Target 8 senior investigator Steve Andrews found others take it a fatal step further. Yeah, and uh, the suicide rate for firefighters is on the rise. And in Tampa, we lost one as recently as September. In Florida, a firefighter, if a firefighter is physically injured on the job, workers' comp will pay for treatment and therapy. Not so for a mental health injury. These were the light moments for former Tampa firefighter Steve Ledoux on the dance floor with his mom. Many dark moments on his job left him hurting. We never, ever in a million years thought we would lose our brother to suicide. According to Steve's sister, Megan, 29 years of burned bodies, murdered children, horrific traffic accidents took a toll. He became dependent on alcohol and this almost like self-destructive behavior. Steve Ledoux's stress became so crippling, fire rescue put him on leave. In Florida, workers' comp doesn't cover mental health injuries first responders develop due to their jobs. Steve had to repay the city for the time he was off. And then this put him into a deeper depression. We have the responsibility to take care of them um, mentally as well as we do physically. Palm Beach State Representative Matt Wilhite, a firefighter paramedic, knows change is necessary. An FSU study shows that of more than 1,000 firefighters surveyed, 47% had suicidal thoughts. 19% actually made plans. 15% attempted it. We would like workers' comp to recognize that a non-physical injury is just as devastating and needs just as much treatment and therapy as a physical injury. Megan remembers toward the end, her brother struggled to get out of bed. I looked at him and I said, Stevie, are you going to do anything to hurt yourself? Do I need to worry about you? And he said, Megan, I would never do that. Two weeks later. It was the middle of the night and I got a phone call from my parents that they were on their way to my brother's home because he had killed himself. I know he's regretting what he did. And he didn't want to die. He just didn't want to suffer anymore. The suffering is over for Steve Ledoux, but for many other first responders, it continues. A representative Matt Wilhite is introducing a bill requiring workers' comp to cover mental health treatment for first responders who suffer from the effects of their jobs. Uh, with data like what we've seen, mm -hmm. Representative Wilhite indicated that uh, if we don't do something, the next suicide is on us. I think everybody was a little bit surprised by this information, but how does it compare when you look at first responders who are thinking about suicide? How does that compare with the general population? According to this study, it's about three to four times higher for firefighters and first responders than the general population. Now, there's likely to be opposition from those who will argue workers' comp rates will cost too much. What sort of cost? do you put on the life of someone like Steve Ledoux? And, you know, hearings on this legislation will take place in December in Tallahassee, and we'll be watching. All right. Thank you, Steve. And if you have a problem you'd like Steve to investigate, call our Target 8 helpline, 1-800-338-0808.